We all know what you need to be rich. A big heap of money, right? Well, yeah, but that's not really an actionable step. What exactly are the key steps that you need to follow to become filthy, stinking rich? We came up with five, the five pillars of wealth. Let's check it out. Welcome to MoneyInChapter.com, the investment finance channel and website that sets you and your finances free. That was Andy and I'm Ben and if you like what we say, hit the like button and click subscribe. The five pillars of wealth. The five steps to wealth are pillars because they are all key structural supports underpinning wealth. Knock one down or fail to build one and you'll never get to where you need to be. And there is a loose order in how they are built. Starting with pillar one, we'll move through the structure until you can support great wealth. Pillar one, work for it. When you're starting out, the only way to get enough money to matter is to work for it, trading your time for money. The pillar is about increasing your knowledge, income, and your savings per month as much as possible. Most people start their journey to wealth in a job or as a self-employed small business owner who effectively owns a job. Either way, you'll likely be forced to work long hours in exchange for a small amount of money. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to initially crank up the money that you make slaving away in a job to the maximum possible. The end goal is to increase your savings per month, or SPM, as high as you can. You can't make much of a difference to your SPM by cutting expenses because there's only so much you can cut. You need to be increasing your SPM by hundreds or preferably thousands. Fastest ways to increase income initially. As an employee, your main ways of making a significant change to your income quickly is to retrain or upskill into a better paid job or working more than one job. Better pay trumps more hours worked. Either of these should be temporary fixes until you are comfortably into the building of Pillar 2. But all jobs are not equal. It's obviously easier for a lawyer, engineer or highly certified plumber to save many hundreds a month than it would be for a call centre button pusher or a cleaner. Pillar 2. Invest it. Having built a strong first pillar of decent SPMs, you need to funnel that into assets. Pillar 2 is all about expanding your income into multiple streams without much further input of time. That means you need some passive income. There's only one of you, so how do you make more money without working more hours? Well, by investing your SPMs of course, and making that money work hard to make you more money. We invest regularly each month, and this cash goes into the stock market, property, commodities, and peer-to-peer -peer lending. While you might think being able to invest thousands a month makes you wealthy, it's not true. Those that are able to do this have to work tirelessly to make that money. If you have to work like a dog, then you're not wealthy. Buy enough investments to draw a passive income from them and you will be well on your way. The goal is to secure enough assets to pay you a rate of return that covers the cost of your basic bills. Enough to free up your time so that you can turn your attention away from a job and towards matters of greater importance. You can start investing in the Wealthify app and get a £25 welcome bonus when you open an account through our link at moneyunshackled.com. Wealthify is a robo-investing platform who do all the hard work for you. Pillar 3. Scale it. Once you've sacked off the need to trade time for money and you're making passive income from Pillar 2, it's time to scale it. Pillar 3 is when you invest your time and wealth into building a global sales machine. True wealth is found in creating businesses, Businesses are what the stock market is built of. Buying and selling shares is inherently a secondary market. The greatest monetary value in a business comes from being there at its creation, owning a stake in an asset that started as nothing and became something infinitely more valuable. A wealth generating business is one which eventually can run without your input by employing others to do the work for you and preferably one which is scalable. Scalable income means that for the same effort, you can sell to either a few people or a few million people. For example, selling your goods through a website is far more scalable than selling those goods through a shop front on a high street where your footfall is limited to the locals. You only have to make a few pennies per transaction in a scalable business model. In the internet age, your customer pool is the whole world. Pillar 4. Leverage it. Next you need to look into the power of leveraging other people's money and assets. The rich do this all the time. If you're investing in property, you already know the impact that using a mortgage has on your returns. It is incomparably better to use the mortgage. This type of leveraging is the leveraging of other people's money to boost your returns, in this case, the bank's money. 
you can and should also leverage other people's contact lists, knowledge and assets. A lot of wealth seeking is about who you know and who they know. We were lucky enough to learn the basic knowledge of property investing, for example, from a couple of people in our wider friendship groups. And we leverage other businesses' products, for example, through affiliate marketing. If you don't yet have the resources to create your own products, you may be able to help sell other people's products that fit your niche. In one way, Nike started in a similar fashion. They bought and sold Japanese trainers before eventually designing and manufacturing their own. Pillar five, defend it. If you've built pillars one to four, you're probably wealthy. But wealthy can be a temporary state if you don't defend it. In pillar five, we look at the strategies you need to implement to defend your wealth from both the greedy tax man and from market forces. We'll link to in the description below a recent video of how to dodge tax legally as a UK investor. Be sure to check that out next. It's packed full of useful strategies to make sure that as your wealth grows, you hold on to it. The tax man is super eager to stop you from becoming wealthy and will penalize your success at every turn. He doesn't understand that by allowing you to keep that money and use it to grow richer, you will one day be able to pay him a tax bill in the millions rather than thousands. We think it's your right, nay, your duty to defend your wealth in any legal way that you can. As an investor starting out, you can make use of the Stocks and Shares ISAs or Innovative Finance ISAs to legally avoid all taxes on your gains. Make use of company structures as well to protect your businesses and property investments from HMRC's grasping fingers. Structure your portfolio for cash flow. If markets crash, the value of your wealth could fall significantly. There are a number of defensive assets that you can invest in to help prevent this from happening. For instance, you could invest a chunk of your wealth into defensive stocks such as food and medical, which are always in demand regardless of the economy, and in commodities like gold and other precious metals, which tend to go up during recessions. More than anything, you need a high proportion of cash flowing assets in your portfolio. Stocks and funds which focus on high dividend yields, properties that pay rent and are not just held for house price appreciation, and high interest loans which pay you a fixed income. If the market crashes and the value of your investments significantly fall, then you should at least continue to receive an income from them. Recap, the five pillars are work for it, invest it, scale it, leverage it, and defend it. There is no time like the present for getting started. No one is saying it will be easy and there will be some real sacrifices of time and effort along the way. But that is why there are so few wealthy people and why so many are content with being average. Question of the day, what would your five pillars of wealth be? And do you agree with our assessment? Let us know in the comments section. Thanks for watching. On this channel we talk a lot about personal finance, investing and all things money. And if you want to see more great content, please hit the subscribe button below. This is moneyunshackled.com. See you next time.